Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are almost at the end of Queensland's 2021 external exams for paper two. This is our second last question on the Hungarian algorithm. Let's get right into it. Question six was worth seven marks. A tow truck company has three tow trucks, A, B, and C, and receives calls from three motorists, P, Q, and R, who have broken down. The network shows the distances in kilometers from each of the tow trucks to each of the motorists, where X represents the distance between tow truck C and motorist P. Now, if we look at the diagram that we've been given, it's not to scale, so we can't use our rulers to work out which is the longest way. And we'll notice that there's nothing there in concrete numbers. Everything is an algebraic expression. That will probably cause a few students to panic because that is quite um, familiar to a lot of people. We've been used to seeing these kind of networks represented with numbers, not with algebraic expressions. Let's finish reading the question. The minimum total distance traveled by the three tow trucks in order for each tow truck to visit exactly one motorist is 32 kilometers. Use the Hungarian algorithm to determine the distance between tow truck C and motorist P. Now it's tempting and it's also possible to actually work out every possible combination and there's nine combinations um, of allocations between tow trucks and motorists and you could use algebraic expressions set each one equal to 32 and then work out the lowest possible value for x. That would be a possible way to work out the optimal allocation however it's not the Hungarian algorithm. You'll notice in the question, we're told what method to use. Now to use a Hungarian algorithm, we need a matrix. So the very first step I think should be to set up a matrix. So let's do that using the information we've got. So we're gonna have the motorists um, on one section and the tow trucks on another section because we're gonna be creating basically an allocation between the two. So I've started with row A. So remember that um, A, B and C represent Present our tow trucks and these are our motorists P, Q and R across the top. So if I just read off this graph now between A and P I've got X plus 6, between A and Q I've got 2X plus 3, between A and R I've got X plus 7. So I filled out the first row. I'm going to follow the same principle reading off my network to fill out the second row and the third row. You may want to pause here just to read off the graph yourself and get an idea of where everything fits in. So you'll notice now I've got this matrix. Once again, it's unfamiliar because it's full of algebra expressions and we're not used to that. We're used to seeing numbers. However, the principles, we're told to use the Hungarian algorithm and that principle is still going to stand. Now we get our first mark for putting this in a matrix form. So that's good news for some of us, even if you didn't know how to progress any further. Our next step Anytime we're do using the Hungarian algorithm is we do what's called row reduction. You would remember this, which is where we find the smallest number in each row and we take that number away from everything else in the row. Now you might be wondering, hang on a minute. It's all, it's all letters, X's and numbers. How do I know which is the smallest in each row? Well, let's look at row C. Row C gives us a nice little clue. It's going to be easy. X will be the smallest in that particular row. Why? Because let's look at this value here between C and Q. Well, it's not just X, it's double X plus one more. And this last one is X plus three more. So that stands to reason that X has got to be the smallest out of all of these because something's been added, which means that, that this value here, CQ and CR are greater than CP. So the smallest in this row will be X. So if we take X from everything away in this row, then we've done row reduction on row C. So let's do that. X take away X gives us zero. Let's look at the next one, two X plus one. If I take X away, I'm gonna have one X plus one. And then if I take X away from um, X plus three, I'll have just three left behind. So I'm getting a little bit closer to something a bit more familiar because now I've got numbers in two, two parts of this row. But the question is, what about the other rows where X has multiples? How do I know if X plus six is greater or smaller than two X plus three? Now think about the logic of this. What if X was equal to one kilometer? Well, if X was one, this value here would be one plus six, that would give me seven. But this could be smaller. If X was one, then that would be two times one, which is two plus three, which is five. 
5 is smaller than 7, which means this would be the smallest one. But what if x was 10? Well, then in that case, this would be 16 and this would be 23. How do I know whether x plus 3 is smaller or greater than 2x plus 3? Well, there's a clue in the question. Okay, the question tells us that distance at minimum is going to be 32 kilometers. So what that means is if I treat that very first row as the optimal allocation um, where tow truck A will go to P, Q and R, okay, and nobody else, no other tow trucks go to those particular motorists. If I treat that as a viable solution, which it's not because everybody's got to go somewhere different. But if I did that, let's have a look what would happen. If it was the optimal allocation, we'll set that equal to 32. If we solve that now, we've got 4x plus 16, 4x plus 16 equals 32, which means 4x equals 16, x is going to be equal to 4 at the very minimum. Okay, so follow me here with the logic. So now if we know that x is 4 at the minimum with that particular allocation, well, I've got 10, 11, and then 11. So x plus 6 has to be the smallest possibility in that row. Now, it's not an optimal allocation, remember, because remember, a tow truck has to go to a different motorist. They can't all be one tow truck servicing everybody. So it's not the optimal allocation, but we know the minimum optimal allocation is 32. So if this was then x would be equal to 4, which means x plus 6 has to be the smallest in that row. So now, knowing that knowledge, we're actually going to subtract x plus 6 from everything in row A. Okay, so let's take it away from x plus 6. Take away x plus 6 for the first part will be 0. Now, 2x, take away x, is just 1x. Plus um, 3, take away 6, is going to be minus 3. So that means that second part there will be x take away 3. And then if I had x plus 7 take away x plus 6, I'm going to be left with just 1. So now I've also got something closely resembling reality in that first row, except for the allocation AQ. But I'm getting closer to a matrix with just numbers in it. Okay, we're going to follow that same principle again for B, because um, B, we also need to sort of follow that same logic work out what is the smallest value in that row. If we follow the same logic again and set that equal to 32, x will be at minimum 5, which means 5 plus 3 is 8, 10 plus 4 is 14, 10. That means x plus 3 has got to be the smallest value in that row. So we're going to take x plus 3 away from everything in that row. So x plus 3 take away x plus 3 gives me 0 again. And if we follow that through across the row, well, 2x plus 4, if I take away x, I'm going to get just an x. 4 take away 3 gives me 1. So I'm going to have x plus 1. So now I've got the last value in that row B, x plus 5, take away x plus 3. x take away x is 0. 5 take away 3 is 2, which means my row reduction is done. I get my second mark out of 7. So I'm not quite finished yet. Got a way to go. Now, as you know, we're going to cover those zeros. And what we need to do when we cover those zeros is we need to get one cover per allocation. What I mean by that is we want three allocations altogether. Three tow trucks going to three motorists, that's three allocations. The minimum number of allocations covering all the zeros here is one, um, one cover. So that means I'm not done. I've got to move on to column reduction. So I've got to look at each column. Now, obviously the first column, column P, I actually don't need to do anything to, it's already zero. So we'll leave that one. Let's look at the smallest value in column Q. Well, at the moment, I've got x with 3 taken away, so it's 3 less than x, and the other's got something added to the x, which means that very first value, x take away 3, is my smallest value. So I'm going to take it away from every value in column Q, which leaves me with a 0 to start off with. x plus 1 take away x take away 3. Well, what that means is the x and the x will cancel. So I've got plus 1 take away, take away 3. Well, the negative negative makes a positive, so it ends up being positive 4. And the same happens, it's the same number underneath, so that'll be a 4 as well. So now I've done column Q. Now it's time to look at column 3, and my smallest number there is 1. So I'm going to take 1 away from everything in that particular column. 1 take away 1 gives me a 0, so that'll be the first one, and then 1. 
So then I'm going to take one way more. And the last one, I'm going to take one away there. It gives me a two. And that's now my column reduction done. I get my third mark out of seven. So I'm pretty much halfway there. I've got to cover those zeros again. And this time when I cover those, I'll only have two covers. Still not finish which means I'm not quite there I haven't found the minimal allocation so now I need that third cover to happen so now I've got to apply the Hungarian algorithm so if you would recall what that means is I'm going to add one to my double covers and subtract one everywhere there's an uncover so there's one double cover that's the allocation of A to P we're going to add one to that becomes one and everything else gets one taken away so that becomes three zero three one well, can we do that now? Let's, uh, we've applied the Hungarian algorithm. We get our fourth mark. Oh, we've passed the halfway point. Let's see now how many allocations when we cover those zeros again. We've got three, which is the right number of allocations, which means we've found the optimal allocation now. What we need to do is translate this somehow and communicate that as what our optimal allocation is. Now you could do this in a couple of ways. You could do it just by writing. Um, a should go here, B should go here, C should go here. Um, I like doing it as a bipartite graph. I think that's a nice way to show the optimal allocation. So let's pop that over here. If we look now um, across the way, A's got two options, Q and R. B's got two options, P and Q, but C only has one option that's going to P. So that is the only way that C can go is to motorist P. Okay, so that eliminates C. Let's go back up again and oh, we see that um, B is also going to P. They can't do that because C's going there, which means B can only go to R which leaves A with one option, that's Q. And we've got those three different values there. Now, remember what we said earlier, that um, the optimal allocation is 32 kilometers. So now if we add those three distances together, the answer is gonna be equal to 32. Now, finding that minimal allocation and expressing that in some way was worth our fifth mark. So we're almost there. And we've now gonna to have to set that in an algebraic equation to 32. So we're gonna set all that information up and let's solve it. We've got on the left hand side, we're going to collect those like terms. We've got 2x plus x plus x gives me 4x. 3 plus 5 is 8. So we've got 4x plus 8 is 32. If we subtract 8 from both sides, we'll end up with 4x equals 24. Divide both sides by 4. x is going to be equal to 6. And that was our sixth mark, was determining x's value. We also could have achieved a seventh mark for our logical communication and organization communicating st key steps. That wouldn't necessarily mean that you'd have to write a statement, although it always is a good idea. It's a word of problem. So communicate with a statement and also make sure that you are giving x's value with units of measurement being kilometers. So you may have only achieved that mark. I don't know how the QCAA applied the marking scheme, Perhaps they were looking for a statement, perhaps they were looking for units here, or perhaps they were just looking at that overall process of writing things down like the words row reduction, column reduction, showing the covers. Maybe it was a combination of all of the above. So when you're communicating those key steps, not just scrolling all over the page, um, having a nice flow, that's where you would have achieved your seventh mark. Now, this was a complex, unfamiliar problem. Did you find my explanation helpful? I sure hope so. Um, it took me a while to think through the process, but as soon as I got that clue, do the Hungarian algorithm, once I got that matrix set up and saw that I needed to do row reduction, there was just that little bit of logical reasoning there. And once I got through that little hiccup of the logical reasoning, everything else was smooth sounding. It was just the same process you've always used with numbers. Row reduction, column reduction, cover things up, Hungarian algorithm, and then optimal allocation. If you found that helpful, you should share it with somebody. Why not share it with a friend or a teacher or a sibling? Tell us in the comments um, if we found it helpful. I love your positive feedback. It makes my day, thank you so much. Or like and subscribe to the channel so you'll know when video seven's on the way. It's our last one in this whole series. And if you've got any questions about something you saw today, you can watch us at um, email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or direct message on social media. Questions in the comments is not a great place. It's really hard to explain things in a couple of um, words, especially when there's limits on how many characters you can use. That's why it's always best to use a better forum like social media or email. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.